Hello class. This week we're going to be talking about uh, preparing something for print and uh, this gets a little bit tricky because we don't actually have uh, a printer in everybody's uh, home next to their computers ready to print and calibrated the exact same way with the exact same inks and everything. In fact uh, this was somewhat of an issue uh, back when this was an in-person class as well. The question was, how do you set all this up specifically to print? Do you want to just use a standard inkjet printer? Do you want to do something a little more realistic? Uh, and by realistic, I mean something that is a little more common to do out of uh, college when you're looking for a job, which would be uh, a sort of print like a, a screen printing, for example, for a poster or maybe for a t-shirt or that sort of thing. But really that becomes a multi-step project that involves having equipment and an explanation of how to use that equipment, demonstrations and safety goggles and all sorts of lab equipment that goes on and on. So in the end, uh, what I've ended up doing for this assignment is setting up a, a sort of conceptual printer. And uh, that that is, I will give you a set of requirements on how to prepare something for print. You'll build some graphics as though you were going to print for a t-shirt uh, using a, a method that is relatively simple uh, and somewhat unrealistic, just so that you can see how much your graphic will change once you put it out to get printed in this fake printer that I've designed for you. Once you see uh, how much has changed, you'll need to go back and maybe redesign some things. And really this assignment is to try to teach you uh, how to plan for printing a graphic because the system that you use to actually print it and the method that you use to do it and the equipment you use to do it means that you may want to design things very, very differently from the start than you would if you were printing with a different set of equipment or for a different process. And really the only way to uh, get a solid feel for that is to get your hands on the equipment that you're going to use or to talk to the person who's in charge of the equipment and get some samples and send some samples off. But again, uh, rather than have you do something like send things to a printing company at uh, extravagant cost and then wait for things to be shipped out somewhere and then take a look at it and then, you know, do it again and again, uh, I just have this big fake printer for you to uh, set up. Now, this particular fake printer that we're going to use uh, that I've imagined for you, this conceptual printer, is going to use a halftone process. So we're going to need to talk a little bit about uh, what a halftone is. Well, here's just the Wikipedia example of uh, what a halftone is. And uh, I, it's actually worth checking out. It's, it's somewhat interesting to see uh, the history of it and all of that. But essentially, the idea is that in order to produce um, a gradient of um, black to white, you know how we use the gradient tool all the time, uh, in print, you have to somehow change things. Now, if you were just from darker to lighter, lighter to darker. So, for example, if you were watercoloring, you could start with a black uh, pigment and then add more water until it becomes transparent and as you paint down it would produce a progressively uh, lighter process and you'd get a gradient but you can't do that with uh, say an inkjet printer for example there's not water in there so what's it doing how's it doing that and what about something like uh, a t-shirt printing process which is really what this conceptual printer we're going to be working on this uh, week uses well, how, how does that work well it uses something generally it uses something called screen printing and uh, we'll talk more about that process, but before we can get into uh, what what screen printing really is, we need to talk a little bit about halftones. So let's take a look at a couple of different uh, halftone um, processes that you'll see, and then we'll explain why we're using the one that we decide to use. So let me pop open this little demonstration I built for you guys. Here's just a uh, standard gradient um, for from Photoshop without any particular anything particularly interesting going on in it it just goes from black and then if you scroll down it goes to white that's it now for your screen that's fine because it knows to produce pixels of a certain uh, amount of lightness or darkness notice this is all in black and white so we're not even worrying about color so it begins at zero and then works its way up to the 255 lightness or brightness and it produces this gradient and depending on how you position it at some point it will hit the middle gray the 128 and that will be done now 
when you move over to uh, printing process, uh, you will probably have one of these two types of prints. And it will be uh, refer generally referred to, well, the way I used to hear it referred to all the time was uh, an AM halftone or an AM gradient. Uh, these days, apparently, it's uh, referred to as a pulse width modulation. Uh, the and we'll talk about what that means, or an FM gradient, which is a, a frequency modulated gradient uh, or frequency FM printing. It's also referred to this FM printing as stochastic printing. So on the AM printing, this AM gradient, what's going on here? Well. Let's take a look. On our original gradient, just done in Photoshop, we went from uh, 0 to 255 value. Over here, we have just black and white, period. It is an on-off proposition. Essentially, we're looking at the paper below, uh, or we're looking at the black ink. Think of it that way. Now, you'll notice uh, as we go down, what seems to be happening is that the dots are becoming smaller, and this is resulting in more of the paper showing through. In this case, it's white, so it's resulting in a lighter and lighter appearance. Now, if we were to zoom out, uh, sans the optical effect caused by Photoshop creating a preview for us, we can see that we are in fact going from black to essentially white, and it gives the appearance of a gray in the middle. So the way it's achieving that is by increasing or decreasing the size of these dots. It's either so big that they touch each other or so small that they're practically non-existent and to the point that they are in fact not even existent. So this is uh, referred to as an AM change, uh, an amplitude modulation change. Now when I explain this, what an AM change is in the past, people tend to uh, look at me like I'm crazy and not really get what what is going on so i've created a little example for you guys i always used to say imagine you had an egg carton and you dumped it in uh, some water as you pushed it down eventually you just see some dots right so let me rewind this say we have this funky egg carton we drop it down in water as it descends we're left with just these little dots if we looked at this directly from above it would appear as though we had big circles at one point, very big circles at one point, and then eventually very, very tiny circles. And what would be occurring is essentially, and let me play that again, what would be occurring essentially is that the, uh, from our viewpoint, the dots are getting smaller. And they're getting smaller uniformly because on this egg carton, because it's all level, uh, essentially they're the same they're the same height so it appears no matter how high or low the water is that they're all the same sized dots now if we were to change the amplitude which is just a fancy way of saying change the height of uh, half of this because it's an egg carton we just tip it up for example bring up the next video what do you think will happen as we dip it in the water the result will be that the dots that are further in the water, the dots, the uh, egg carton that's deeper in the water, will produce smaller looking dots, while the egg carton that's sticking higher out of the water will produce larger looking dots. And the reason is that the amplitude has changed. Now, modulation just means a change over time that's uh, uh, predictable, uh, essentially. So, um, or more accurately, just uh, a change uh, in general. So let's go back to our uh, AM. We can see that these dots, if we look carefully, they're rotated at 45 degrees, which is what's creating uh, this spacing where one of them, uh, it, it looks as though essentially if you have black, then the next one's white, the next one's black, the next one's white, and then that's offset. What's really happening is that we've got these lines going at 45 degree angles uh, through it. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So these are at a 45 degree angle. But what's important to note is that dot for dot, the center of the dots are placed at the same location. It's only the size of the dot that's changing. That change is creating the uh, the amplitude modulation frequency, or as they call it now, the pulse width modulation change i shouldn't have said frequency the amplitude modulation or in this in this case now it's called the pulse width modulation don't know uh, how frequently that's used in our industry i have not uh, really heard that term used outside of some literature 
Uh, so you can see it goes down very, very small. So by decreasing the size, we are allowing more and more of the paper through, and voila, we have more of a gradient. We'll talk more about uh, all of this in a little bit, but essentially, we are able to uh, change the size, and in doing so, voila, we change the gradient. Uh, and we start from black, and we end up at uh, white. Now there is another uh, standard way of doing that, referred to as uh, frequency modulation uh, fre gradient. Uh, it's also more commonly known as stochastic printing. So instead of changing the size of things, what we're doing is we're changing the uh, spacing. And it, it looks fairly random. Uh, really, it's, it's going on a line by line process. So this would be, uh, let me zoom in even further. Uh, each horizontal line. Wow, I flew way too far over. Here we go. Sorry, one moment, please. Each of these uh, lines would be uh, what I'm referring to as a line, and our dots are essentially just one print, and sometimes they'll be clumped closer together and will create the appearance of larger ones. But really, uh, all that's happening is it's these one pixel dots that are either uh, placed very close together or very far apart. Now, I just realized I pointed these out in the wrong way. Uh, in this case, it's the black that we're placing down again on white. So uh, you can see we have uh, what looks like about seven black dots in a row and then a space and then another seven or so black dots and so forth. Whereas if we go down to say, oh, that causes some eye strain on my part. Let's just skip down a little further. As we get way far down, you can see that, let me zoom in enough so we can get a better view. We have essentially one little dot by its, uh, its lonesome, and then it's a very long time before we get on the same line to another dot. It's, it's very widely spaced apart. Now that's what it's referring to as frequency modulation. The frequency of the dots becomes less in order to allow more of the paper through, and eventually it becomes so much less that it doesn't exist. So we have uh, on one end very, very tightly packed together black pixels, black dots, creating the black. And on the other end, we have the uh, very loosely packed together pixels, creating the um, wide space in it, the white. So that's another way of handling it, and this is referred to as, again, stochastic printing or FM printing. In this case, it's an FM gradient. This one is uh, amplitude modulation printing. Um, it's also apparently referred to as pulse width uh, printing, which uh, I had not heard of really before I was uh, double checking some of my research for today. I see we're coming up to the 15 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and break this up into two videos so that you don't have to uh, uh, paw through them in order to find bits and pieces as you need to. I will see you in the next video where we will talk more about this type of printing and what it corresponds to.